Hello everyone and welcome to the very first ever Cotecna talk show. Um, please note that if you have any question, you can feel free to post it. There is a QA and a button where you, you can post all the questions that you want and that we'll be covering at the end of this session. So my name is Mariam Benayet and I am a verification of conformity senior manager for business development, sales and marketing at Cotecna. I've been part of Cotecna for over 10 years, which has given me a front row seat to the evolution of both Cotecna and the tech industry. I'll be moderating today's discussion on a very important topic, food safety. What we eat, how it's produced and processed, and many other factors all contribute to preventing of foodborne diseases and injuries. So to help us delve into that topic, let me introduce you to some of our best in-house experts. So Henri de Valicourt. Henri is our VP for food safety, and he has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Henri played an integral role in the establishment and growth at the, of the Cotecna food business line. And he has also contributed to the M&A of several labs in Cotecna Group. So welcome, Harry. Kamlesh you. Parmer. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Kamlesh Parmer. He is the director for VOC and commodities in the Middle East at Cotecna. He has been in the tick industry for over 10 years, and he leads the Cotecna operation in the Middle East. Under his leadership, Cotecna recently gained halal certification. Welcome, Kamlesh. Thank you, Mariam. Marco Meschiari. He's our micro analytical division manager and scientific director at Neotron, part of Cotecna Group. So Marco has been a part of Neotron for over 20 years and more than 15 years with R&D. He leads the micro analytical division and a team of over 200 people. Welcome, Marco. Hello, thank you for the introduction, Mario. Dr. Chandrajit, he is our managing director, uh, director at Wimpy Laboratories. He is a highly qualified chemist with extensive credentials and experience. He has more than 22 years of experience in testing, calibration, auditing, inspection, and other professional services. He has been setting up laboratories and he is also involved in R&D and works. So welcome, Chandrajit. Thanks, Mariam. And finally, Eric Kang, our regional director at Keishin Certification, also called KCB. He has 16 years of working experience in quality management in the field of food, biotechnology, and vet drug. Welcome, Eric. Hello, Maram. Thank you for your introduction. You're welcome. So let us start. Our food safety business line is one out of the five business line we have at Cotecna. For those who know it, Cotecna motto is trust for moving world. But it's not just a catchphrase, but it's really a promise to help create safe and more efficient supply chain for our clients. In food safety, we keep that promise by providing assurance from farm to fork. So Harry, what is food safety business line? What does it cover? And why is it so important for Cotecna? Thank you very thank you very much, Miriam. It is a it is it is a very uh, interesting and exciting question to answer, and I will be very happy to answer it with my colleagues today. First of all, I will, in a nutshell and very shortly, introduce uh, our food safety business line to to you all. Mm -hmm. So the food safety is quite a recent business line at Cotecna, but it's it's now uh, seven at least uh, up to seven labs, big and significant labs all over the world. There is Nofa Lab in the Netherlands, which is specialized mm -hmm. in oil and nuts. Uh, for traders. There is Neotron, which is a very, very major laboratory based in Italy and dealing with all sorts of analysis. And Marco will, 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 will talk a bit more about, about Neotron in, in a few minutes. There is Fitosol in Spain, specialized in agri testings and, and fertilizer testings. There is also in India Shiva, close to Bangalore, which is a, a generalist food lab. There is in um, the EAU in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, Wimpy, uh, and of course, uh, um, Dr. Sanrajit is going to present and talk about what uh, um, Wimpy is able to, to perform. There is Bayer in China, uh, a lab based in China, able to perform analysis for 
both public and private uh, companies and clients. And finally, the newcomer in the family, few few weeks ago, joining the, the Cotecna family few weeks ago, there is Agronomica based in Brazil, which is a, a, a laboratory dealing with and performing agri-analysis. Agri so as you can see, there is some now very consistent uh, network of laboratories, which is supported also by smaller laboratories uh, that, that are part of our agribusiness lines. But this is not all. Huh? Labs are not all when it comes to food safety. There is also other services that we will see later on today. Uh, certification, mm -hmm. inspe cargo inspections that all contribute to food safety. So this is for what uh, Cotecna is able to do uh, for our customers. But let me and very shortly, and I, I will be, I'm sorry, uh, I, 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 will, I will cut the corners to be really, uh, to be really short in what I'm going to say. But let me introduce a little bit the situation of food safety today. Uh, you know all that we are, uh, the world is experiencing really tremendous changes currently with high mm -hmm. level of, of, uh, of inflation, cost are infla uh, uh, the costs mm -hmm. are inflating energy, but not, all, not only energies. There is also um, supply shortage due to wars in Ukraine or other um, um, global warming events uh, that are, dist that are uh, disrupting the, our, the food supply chain all over the world. And for mm -hmm. this reason, most of the actors in the food supply chain are currently fighting to secure the food supply. So food security is today a main stake for all, uh, for all decision makers in the, food, uh, in the food business. But when we are talking about food security, we are talking about supplying people with food, which is a basic. But the risk is to um, put aside a little bit food safety, which means providing food which is really uh, safe and healthy for the people. And the point today is to keep in mind that uh, looking for food safety, food security, looking for finding new routes, new source of supply for food for a growing number of people in the world should not mean to let aside uh, what food safety is today. Le, in order to have an idea of what is going to come looking ahead, um, I would just refer to uh, about food safety. Huh? Food safety. Uh, I, I would I would refer to two big uh, white papers that has been written recently by big organization like the FAO, so the mm -hmm. Food and Agri Organization in the United Nations in one side, and the US FDA in in in, in, the, in the USA, mm -hmm. and both have issued really key papers, blue papers, white papers dealing with food safety and all stress how important food safety is today. Food safety has been a major issue for the last 10, 20, 30 years, and there were an increasing number of regulations applying to any sort of foods and feed. And this mm -hmm. is now we can tell that the, the situation is improving little by little, but there is always new risk uh, uh, coming up and those risk among those risks we can we, we can we can uh, we can tell that there is uh, today uh, mineral oils there is also uh, a new type of uh, toxins that are let uh, due to pollution that are let in the soil there is mm. always new new substances that can uh, threat uh, human health uh, over all the over the world and these two big you know uh, um, uh, organizations in those papers have all said that looking ahead, there is a bright perspective to improve uh, food safety um, in, the, in, the, in the decades to come. And the main, and the main uh, lever to improve food safety is technology, new technologies mm -hmm. and digitalization technologies. I will not list all what they said, and I really uh, recommend you to go on the web. You can download those documents and read it carefully. But what mm -hmm. I can tell is that um, all the new technologies you are hearing about are now able to apply to food safety. Could be big data, it could be uh, artificial intelligence to deal with a huge number of data notification uh, that are able to prevent food safety crisis rather than uh, reacting after the crisis, the, the, mm. uh, the surge of the crisis. There is also um, blockchains that enable yeah. better traceability among the supply chain and more efficient uh, market recalls. There is also Internet of Things sensors that are also uh, enable that can enable to um, monitor better all sorts of parameters from farm to fork, from silos to the consumer fridge. But and there is also 
uh, a number of, of other new technologies that uh, that Cotecna, and, and, and that's why I would like to come back to Cotecna, that Cotecna is currently working on in order to implement uh, those technologies in their laboratories and offices and, uh, and certification teams in order to provide to our customers uh, new tools to fight uh, with food safety without jeopardizing food security, uh, keeping in mind that the supply chain is going to be disrupted for now for for still a long time because we are in a changing world and and we have to be uh, 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 to be able to adapt uh, to those changing uh, changing uh, 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 food supply chains. Um, that's what I would like to introduce shortly, and I I, I know uh, perfectly that uh, I, I've done some. Uh, 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 shortcuts. I would be happy to answer uh, some questions at the end of our presentation if my colleague didn't uh, uh, would uh, would not have uh, answered those questions. Um, and uh, I'm happy to now uh, hand over uh, uh, to uh, I think it's uh, the next next speaker. Um, yes. Thank you, Hari. Thank, thank you very much for this insightful uh, introduction. So as we have uh, uh, seen, Cotec now offers a full range of food so safety services. But let us now focus on a very trendy topic, halal certification. So Kamlesh, in your region, could you give us an overview of Cotec now's halal certification system? Thank you very much, Mariam. So let's begin the conversation with few statistics, which is of interest uh, to understand how big and what is halal industry about. Mm -hmm. In 2021, the global halal food market witnessed a growth of approximately 11 percentage. The value of this market as of 2021 is $1,978 billion. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Out of this, the UAE is leading uh, with a 36 percent market share of the global market, followed by Saudi Arabia, 21 percent. Egypt is at 12 percent, Malaysia, 5 percent and followed by the rest of the other countries. By 2027, which is five years down the line, the market is projected to reach $3,908 billion. So that's a massive market out there, and it's growing with a double digit uh, compound annual growth rate. And we, we want to be a part of this as we feel that this is going to be the future uh, for food industry, especially for certain section of the society. Mm -hmm. Dubai, again, is strategically lo located in the Middle East, which comprises 20% of the world's Muslim population. Halal food is not just a concept, uh, but a way of life that equally ensures to both a Muslim as well as a non-Muslim consumer. Mm -hmm. Halal certification is also food safety plus following the Islamic dietary requirements. So it's a compliance for both food safety as well as the Islamic dietary requirements. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, a food or a cosmetic product or any product for that matter cannot be labeled as halal if the product is not safe for consumption or use. Dubai being the capital of Islamic economy, it plays a major role in halal certification and influences the halal concept around the globe through standards, regulations, forums, exhibitions, and also conferences. During COVID, the growth of e-commerce played a very significant played a significant role in fueling the halal food market growth, and this would continue for next few years. In recent years, online platforms have expanded their offerings across a wide range of products, making it easier for consumers to find products that comply to the requirements of uh, uh, of GSO standard, which is in compliant to the uh, halal requirements. These platforms are also providing tools and resources for even restaurants who have uh, to serve these halal dishes. So in all, I think it's it's one of the uh, important certification which Kotecna believes and the market statistics uh, are giving the signals. So that's why we, we are now on this journey. Mm. Okay, wow, what a massive uh, market here. But at Kotecna, what do we offer and what are our accreditations? Uh, yes, so uh, this this is a very good question because I think halal as we as we are a halal certification body, it's not just that we can certify, but we have to comply to a lot of requirements, and also we have to be a notified body. So what what are we or what do we mm -hmm. have? We are accredited by JAC, which is GCC Accreditation Center, and uh, okay. with, with the latest version of standard, which is GSO two zero five five dash two. This is the most popular accreditation body for halal certification across mm -hmm. the globe, and we have it through them. 
So accreditation is the prerequisite and we have that. Apart from that, Kutekna Dubai as well as Kutekna Kenya have accredited uh, offices for providing the halal certification and mm -hmm. we are notified also by Saudi SFDA, which is Saudi Food and Drug Authority for Halal uh, Center. And we are also notified by Ministry of Information and Advanced Technology, which is MOIAT, which is based out of UAE, where we have the ESMA procedures uh, and we need to be notified. So we are notified by these two important bodies, which enables us to provide regional as well as global certification. Kutekna, um, uh, also uh, with this accreditation can provide halal certification to uh, food manufacturers, slaughterhouses mm -hmm. in Kenya and African region, uh, food packaging industry, catering, restaurants, animal feed, as well as cosmetics, including perfumery products. Along mm -hmm. with product certification, we also do shipment certification as there are certain countries where there is, an, there is a mandate coming from the government uh, which, uh, which requires shipment certificate. So we do both uh, the certificate of compliance as well as the shipment certification. Okay, thank you, Kamlesh. So we have a very comprehensive portfolio of services, but why should we choose Katekna Halal certification? And also, um, do we carry out this type of certification in another part of the world? Okay, very important question. So I will answer it with three bullet points uh, and then I'll explain. So the first one is presence. Uh, second one is accreditation recognition. And the third one is competency. Competency being the utmost uh, important criteria. Mm -hmm. So in terms of presence, Katekna has multiple offices, including laboratories, as Henry was mentioning, across the globe. And we are present in more than 50 countries. Uh, this enables client uh, to have uh, you know, a point of co contact in their local countries. And also it gives us a competitive edge in providing certification to these kind of manufacturers and uh, supply chain providers. By the way, if, if you're not aware, I would like to give an imp important uh, fact that there are almost 260 halal certification bodies in the world, but out of this 260, most of them are small local based or country based organization. These are not international organizations. So mm -hmm. that's where we have the edge as we can provide you with a single uh, stop of uh, you know, solutions. The second one is accreditation and recognition, as I already explained in my previous uh, question, that we have all the necessary accreditation and also we are recognized. We are part of various councils, forums. So uh, we have the latest uh, you know, updates and the standards to support our clients. The third one, which is the most important, is competency. Today, why Kutekna? Kutekna would be differentiated on the basis of how we are providing the services, what kind of technical expertise we have. Uh, so we have Kutekna as an entity, we have our quality policy, right? And uh, it mentions about us being a reliable and uh, customer focused uh, provider. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you look at the policy, the first pointer on how to accomplish this, the first pointer says, and I'll read it exactly the way it is. It says maintaining and enhancing our operational competence. So this is why this is this is imbibed it's in our uh, you know blood of Kutekna that this is how we are going to differentiate we have the necessary technical staff they are upgraded with the latest uh, you know uh, trainings knowledge and uh, we also are subjected to various third party and internal audits to identify gap areas of improvement why just to ensure that we have the latest uh, information and we are providing solutions to our client and we are adhering to the uh, compliance provided and stipulated by authorities we have a very good network of islamic affairs expert these experts are an integral part of certification process Thank you, Kamlesh. So excellence is indeed part of our DNA. So to conclude this uh, trendy topic, what are the opportunities and challenges in this business? OK, so uh, in, in terms of opportunities, as we saw that uh, the, the food market, halal food market, the statistics, it's growing uh, at a very growth rate, good rate. And uh, there is a lot of awareness uh, right now for halal food uh, and cosmetics. And uh, uh, just to give you another statistics that by 2030, uh, it is projected that the Muslim population would be around 2.2 billion people. So out there, there is a segment of people where they require this kind of services 
and uh, I think it's it's imminent. It's very important for us to be there to support our clients and the growing population by providing these kind of uh, services. There is an increased spending and investment in the halal sector year on year. Uh, mm -hmm. There there are a lot of new countries which are making this as a mandate in terms of having shipment certificate or in terms of having a certificate of conformity, doing the slaughterhouse uh, certification and all. Uh, so it, it, halal today is becoming an integral part of the food supply chain, and these are the opportunities which we would like to uh, you know be a part of. In terms of challenges, I think one of the most important challenges for the halal food industry is educating consumers about what constitutes halal food. Today, mm. uh, many people unknowingly purchase foods that are uh, that are not halal, and they, they they are not even sure as to what to look for. So, uh, I think as a CB, uh, we are already working with uh, all the governments uh, with whom we are recognized and notified to uh, you know create this awareness. And this session again is one of the awareness session where we are trying to uh, pass on the information to the clients uh, on what to look and what to not look for in halal certification. The another challenge is that slaughter, uh, halal slaughter, uh, traditionally employs different methods than uh, regular slaughterhouses, which means that firms now in future should develop unique production process and safety equipment. Now this can be difficult because the infrastructure and technology required by the halal meat pro processors may not be readily available. And uh, even if it is available, it is not affordable. So that is one of the challenge for the halal uh, you know, industry. Uh, apart from that, we have also noticed that there are small, as uh, majority of the halal certification bodies are small, we have noticed that in market, in certain markets where people are not having information on the halal certification, we have seen unaccredited certification bodies, we have seen fake certificates, we have seen mm -hmm. certain uh, uh, you know, market monitoring activities which is not uh, uh, conducted. So in all, uh, I think uh, uh, these are the challenges which I see for the halal industry. Okay, thank you very much, Kamlesh, for this uh, really insightful um, uh, introduction on halal certification. So, um, Neotron aims to support clients with its expertise to put safe products in the market in order to guarantee human health and well-being. So, let us now discover more about the vitamins testing services that we uh, offer, and um, let's do that with our expert, Marco Meschiari. So Marco, what is the market that we are talking about and what are the analyses that Neotron can do? Okay, yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mariam. Well, the, the, the market is, uh, is very promising. It's a growing market in terms of vitamins, but uh, generally speaking, supplement. Mm -hmm. And there are several reasons uh, of, uh, of this growing market. Uh, we can say that uh, COVID gave uh, a big boost uh, mm -hmm. to this market because during COVID time, uh, the, the consumption of vit vitamins uh, increased, increased a lot. But apart from COVID, uh, there are uh, other reasons. And I think that the, the main one, the most important one, is linked to, to a mega trend. In a mm -hmm. developed country, the, the average population age is uh, is is increasing uh, over the years. So uh, the, the consequence of this uh, is uh, that uh, is a more request of vitamin and enriched food or uh, vitamin present in supplement or functional food. In terms of analysis that Neutron can provide, we can say that uh, um, Neutron can test all kinds of vitamins in all kinds of uh, product. When I say product, oh. I mean, uh, basically food product, uh, food supplement and cosmetics. And uh, in total, we are speaking about uh, more or less 35, 40 different uh, compound. We can split vitamin, hydrophilic vitamin and lipophilic vitamin. And uh, yes, I, I think that uh, is an important point. Uh, mm, uh, the, the capability to test this vitamin uh, um, is is not recent for Neutron. We test vitamins since a uh, long time ago, several years. Mm. And this, uh, this was a bridge to move from the food market to the food supplement market because we developed this capability in food and then we use this capability to step in the, the food supplement market that is a huge market in Europe, at least also in US. 
Okay, interesting. And uh, what are the challenges behind the scenes and how does the technology support this type of analysis? Yes, I think uh, technically speaking, from a technical point of view, the, the, the big challenge is related to the variability of the product that we have to analyze because uh, Okay, there are a lot of different food, different uh, finished product that can contain vitamins. Uh, but if we speak about supplement, uh, we have syrups, uh, pills, tablet, caps. Uh, and for each of these form, uh, we have uh, a lot of different product with different composition, different formulation. So is um, mm -hmm. it's not easy to have uh, the a suitable analytical method able to to give a reliable result on all these uh, different products. To overcome, to, to win this challenge, uh, an important point is the dialogue with customer. It's uh, mm -hmm. really important from my point of view, put the lab directly in contact with the customer to share information about the product. Because in order to, to analyze uh, in a correct way with a suitable method the product, uh, the lab has to know the product and is the customer that know the product better than everyone else. Just to give you a quick example, now there are a lot of vitamins that are uh, microencapsulated. Microencapsulation is a technology that protects the vitamin into the product to make the, the vitamin more bioavailable. So mm -hmm. for the lab, it's very important to know if the vitamin is microencapsulated and which kind of microencapsulation is used. So uh, is the customer that have to, to give this information uh, to, to the lab. Okay, well, interesting. About, yes, I, I switch the, your last question on your last yes. question, the, the technology. The technology, yeah. The technology, well, the, the technology is always a plus when we, when we talk about uh, testing, but uh, I, I like to say that uh, in order to perform well in testing, you need the three M. The first M is men in terms of uh, people. You need uh, right people, skilled people, engaged people. The second M is machine. So yes, is a technology. Technology is uh, the state of the art technology helps. And the third M is uh, me methods. So the procedure, the SOP, and they know how uh, that you need to to to, te to test uh, products. So technology is important, but is not the silver bullet to solve any problem. It helps. It helps a lot sometimes, but is only a part of the story. Okay, I got it. And how do you see the future? Well, is a. Um, it's very difficult to, to make forecast, especially in this uh, VUCA world where we have volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and these uh, components are so high. I think mm. that the future is um, look promising because the growth in food supplement market is leading also the, the vitamin market. And I think that people focus their attention as consumer on food safety and food quality. They are more and more aware that nutrition play a big role in order to have a healthy life. What we call nutrition uh, at the end of the day is composed by all uh, kind of food we consume daily. And I think that testing lab like Neutron have a big responsibility because they verify the safety, the quality and the compliance of what we are eating every day. Okay. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you. It was really interesting to learn more about the vitamins testing. So let us now jump in another line of business, one that, uh, that is deep to my heart, actually, verification of conformity. So our verification of conformity service helps to ensure that shipments conform to local importing standards in order to be cleared at destination. So let us talk about a specific program. Cotecna is authorized by the Saudi Food and Drug Authority, SFDA in order to issue certificate of conformity. These COCs are for some regulated food products exported to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So I would like now to invite Kamlesh to explain the program to us. So Kamlesh, what are the regulated products? 
Thank you very much, Mariam. Uh, before I quickly go on the regulated list of products, I would just uh, give a brief about uh, the accreditation and what uh, notification we have for the Saudi Food and Drug Authority, as you correctly mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we are accredited again by Jack for the ISO 17065, which is product certification uh, for our Saudi office for both food as well as cosmetic products. And we are also notified by SFDA, as Mariam mentioned, which is to ensure the compliance of applicable standards for all regulated food products which are imported into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, now, there is a perception uh, and often uh, it used to be a case in past that uh, people used to find it difficult to uh, export to Saudi Arabia because of the amount of procedures and everything. But we are here as a certification body and uh, after having so many years of experience of working with these authorities we are here to partner and we are here to support you so i'll i'll now talk about the questions which uh, mariam would be asking but if you have any questions or if you want to contact us for anything to do with uh, sfda for food please do not hesitate to contact so in terms of list of regulated products um, there are for it's, it's a unique program for SFDA food and only few countries are regulated and within these countries there are limited products which are regulated. So mm -hmm. for example, Egypt, we have two products uh, for Egypt country of origin, we have two product categories which are regulated. One is frozen and processed fr fresh fruits and vegetables okay. and the other is dairy products including cheese. Then we have Jordan. For Jordan, we have all kind of food products uh, from uh, animal or plant sources. For Sudan, we have only the meat products, which is beef and sheep meat. Sri Lanka, tea is uh, regulated, only tea. And that is again because uh, in 2021, uh, there was a lot of market surveillance activity and there was uh, the Sri Lankan country of origin tea was found to have a higher level of pesticide. So that is also regulated for Sri Lanka. From India, we have sesame uh, products, uh, which are complying to the approved specification of pesticides, uh, especially that they are free from ethylene oxi oxide, which is again a pesticide uh, parameter. Okay. They also have uh, sheep and buffalo meat as a regulated product, rice, which is one of the biggest. And let me tell you that uh, we have a fantastic uh, product manager, which is Alam Mirza in India, who is the, uh, you know, as an expert uh, for rice. And he, we are doing a fantastic business out of India for rice business. So uh, that is one of the regulated product. We are also uh, doing processed fruit and uh, processed fruits and vegetables. So fruits and vegetables is something which was added to the regulated list in the year 2021 uh, during mm -hmm. uh, July and it was implemented uh, in the second half. Now this was, uh, uh, these are perishable products and uh, it requires a very short timeline for us from the moment the product is sourced from farm until, you know, we do the inspection, we do the testing and then we mm -hmm. do the uh, certification and it happens within a moment of like few days, you know, four to five days is the overall uh, turnaround time. Now, there's a mandatory certificate of uh, conformity for this program and uh, we cater to these markets, what I've just told you, and uh, we are ensuring that they are complying to the technical regulation and the standards which are authorized by SFDA themselves. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Just uh, yeah, just, just to let you know what are these technical regulation or the standards. Uh, basically, we are following the uh, technical regulation for SFDA, which is uh, FD 382, which is maximum limits of uh, for pesticide residues in agricultural food products, and uh, also the GSO 1016, which is for microbiological uh, standard, and uh, with. Uh, in addition to these requirements for Egyptian products, there's another requirement to have the hepatitis A virus uh, tested. And uh, for marking and labeling, we are uh, we are looking at SFDA GSO 9 standard for pre-packaged food products. Okay, right. Um, so briefly, could you please introduce us the process and how do we carry out the assessment at Cotecna? Fantastic. So we have, again, in, in three steps, uh, any imports which are coming in Saudi, you need to ensure that these three steps are uh, followed. What is okay. the first step? The first step is registration with the Saudi Arabia authorities. 
uh, now in food products, the authority is SFDA. So, for example, if I have a product of rice which I need to export from India to Saudi, so I as an importer or as an exporter would need to ensure that I am registering myself uh, as an importer for that particular product and brand and giving the details. So that is the first step. OK, number two, we have to uh, then do the evaluation activities along with the exporter or the shipper. So this is where mm -hmm. uh, CVs like Katekna would be assisting in terms of conducting the, uh, the testing, the inspection, the documentary verification. And we would be in touch with our clients to explain them what are the procedures. Uh, and uh, it's not rocket science. It's, it's a basically simple procedure where we get the nomination. We do the compliance activities, as I said, whether it is inspection, testing, we validate the results with the standards and we ensure that the products are having the necessary labeling and marking compliance. We ensure that they are properly packed. We ensure that it's safe uh, uh, for the uh, you know transportation and then we certify. So that is the second, uh, that is the third step. So after the final review is conducted, we make a decision and we issue the certificate of conformity, which is required in order to clear your goods in customs mm -hmm. in uh, in Saudi Arabia. Okay, perfect. Um, and uh, finally, last question perhaps I have for you is, what role do remote technologies and innovation play in Kotekna's evolution? Thank you very much for this question. In fact, we had a seminar on this uh, recently with uh, the TIC Indeed. Council. Yes, so uh, I'll take a few excerpts from that particular conversation. Uh, it 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 is it is known to everyone that during COVID uh, remote inspections uh, there was a spike in remote inspections across the industry, not just for Katekna, but across the industry, whether it is for testing laboratories, whether it is for inspection bodies, whether it is for certification bodies. Uh, at peak time, we were doing more than 80% of our inspections uh, remotely. And uh, till date, uh, we have now evolved where we are now doing a combination of remote as well as on-site, which is a hybrid inspection. And this is to stay in future as well. Uh, it, it actually uh, is very efficient. And uh, this is something which has been adapted across the industry. However, the present uh, is to focus uh, and it is to ensure that we are perfecting whatever tools we have to facilitate and drive the effectiveness of remote audits as well as the inspections. Uh, there are tools which uh, we are using currently within Kotekna in order to mm -hmm. maintain the integrity, uh, efficacy as well as the efficiency of the virtual format. Uh, and this concept is through both mediums. It is through the software as well as the hardware. Uh, and these work together along with the human touch. It mm -hmm. includes the uh, traditional technology, as I said, the lap laptop, uh, computers, mobiles, file sharing programs, teleconference platforms, uh, and then uh, we have the CCTV cameras and smartphones as well. However, we are also uh, using uh, certain uh, you know, technology, as Henry was mentioning, in terms of drones, wearable technology, and artificial intelligence. Uh, so. We have evolved uh, and we would be evolving in future also to ensure that we are meeting the industry standards and we are providing solutions which are not just uh, improving the turnaround time for Katekna, but also for our clients uh, to improve uh, our service levels and the cost as well. OK, Thank fantastic. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting introduction about verification of conformity. So last year, WIMPY laboratories in the UAE have been acquired by Kotekna. WIMPY laboratories are one of the largest private laboratories in the Middle East. People often ask me, what are the latest tests that we can perform in our laboratories? So Dr. Dr. Chandrajit, please tell us about what sets WIMPY apart from its competitors and more specifically, what is your approach to food testing? Thanks, Mariam, for uh asking this question and thank you everyone. Basically, I would like to start with uh, a concept of consumer habits. The consumer habits and their expectations are totally changing after COVID situation. How we can understand whether a bottle of water contains bacteria, what is the nutritional value and contaminants such as heavy metals or the pesticide which just Kamalesh mentioned and mm -hmm. any other dangerous materials in, the bo in this bottle of water. To meet regulatory requirements and ensure your product safe, testing is the solution. 
Cotecna and Wimpy Laboratories are able to meet your expectation to certify product keep consumer safe. There are three key factors which I want to mention about Wimpy Laboratories. Number one, we are having 17 years of experience and in testing and 300 technicians on board in UAE. We catch up 9,000 customers from 45 different countries at the moment. We are having 3,500 accredited tests from three accreditation bodies, and we issue 270,000 test reports per annum. This is the portfolio of what WIMP is having at the moment. Apart Impressive. from local, thank you. <laughs> Apart from local ISO accreditations and regional international approvals, WIMP is competent to conduct complete food testing for oils and fats, fats based on phosphor requirements. We had all key sophisticated advanced equipments like LCMS, GCMS, GCFID, including the latest technique called a Randox. We provide RT-PCR testing for all type of food products to meet halal and GMO testing requirements. And our technicians are able to meet the specifications of ISO, ASGM, USFEA, and AF APHA, SASO, and all inspection testing requirements. The major test which we provide for food testing, basically for microbial enumerations, we provide nutrition analysis. We do challenge studies the same way you do for the diabetic patients. We do for the challenge test for the food products. And do we are able to do all type of microbial identification and rapid pathogen in detection, which we can do in our biotech lab raw material qualification and purpose that we do. And recently I have seen that a lot of growth promoters are coming into the market, especially for health drinks and for the products which you will see in the gyms and all. So all these growth promoters which we can do for the steroids antibiotic testing. And many of our clients are asking us to do histamine testing in food fish products. We are kept able to do it. And Mr. Kamalish was mentioning about pesticide tests for SFDA or Egyptian requirements or uh, UN specifications. We are capable to, to cover almost all the pesticides and which we are accredited. We do shelf life analysis for the products, not only for the products, we are capable to do all the food packaging materials as well. Initially, the concept of food packaging materials as simply doing so migration testing, whether it's overall or specific migrations. Then later, the technology improved to the various type of food packaging product testing. Recently, we are accredited for compostability of the food packaging material testing, which will ensure that totally environmental safe. We do allergen testing, antibiotics testing, and halal, halal and GMO testing which covers key requirements of food safety requirements of your consumers and your customers. And finally, our aim to support customers globally to ensure their food safety standards are in place. Wow. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chandrajit. What a comprehensive and uh, amazing uh, portfolio of services that you can offer. Um, let us now um, see a final aspect of food safety that we'll be covering today, uh, which is the certification system. Let's zoom in on our food certification services within China. So for those who doesn't know, in 2020, Cortecna has acquired Keshin certification, also called KCB. KCB is a leading certification body in China and is approved by CNCA. The company has issued more than 22,000 certificates until 2021 and is covering a full range of system and product certification services. So Eric, can you introduce us to KCB and share with us the market drivers in terms of food safety, please? Hello, everyone. I'm happy to join the Contact the Show. Uh, as the Maria introduced that, KCB joined the Contact Group in 2020 and now it's KCB is the leading provider for certification services. Uh, Cashing certification assures the world more efficient and valid by uh, shaping sustainable supply chains that are economic beneficially, environmental friendly, and socially responsible. 
and bring trust with quality, traceability, and reliability. That is to say, uh, the production of food involves uh, complex supply chains and processes uh, requiring different types of accredited conformity assessment activities. A number of food schemes uh, require certification for the production of crops, animal feed, and practices involved with sourcing, harvest, and slaughter. So by, by the year end of 2021, uh, Haixin has conducted uh, 20,000 uh, certificate and performed 10,000 uh, audits every day. And Haixin has more than 16 years in the field of food safety certification. And we have uh, uh, a coverage of 100% of our supply chain. Uh, in the larger picture, uh, certification is assuring sustainability in food production. Uh, not only for safety of food product itself, but also applied to care the environment, economic, people, and all stakeholders during the food production process. Uh, as you know, certification also covers steps such as packaging, storage, uh, distribution, transportation, and retailing in the supply chains. The integration services across the value chain bring trust from unknown nature farm to certain daily life. Uh, the storage and the display of food products in the retail environment also benefits from certification activities, storage services, uh, processes, and management systems. Food certification services are used to protect consumers and do allow the economic operators to ensure the identical quality of their globalization supply chains. And next, I want to share with you the, some key drivers of the food service business in China. The first one is increase in outbreak of football disease and frequent food safety accidents. The second one is rise in consumer awareness about food safety and quality. The third one is more stringent food safety uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is uh, globalization in food supply chain. The fifth one is increase in demand for convenience and packaged food products. The last one is the technological advancement in food production and detection. So back to the uh, strengths of KCB. Uh, currently, Kaixin provides different types of certification programs that cover 100% food supply chain from farm to table. Uh, for example, for feed and fertilizer producers, our certification supports producers to provide uh, high quality products, uh, be more friendly to environment, uh, build better social uh, liability structure, satisfy corresponding production standard. For crop livestock producers, our agri-certification supports producers to build modern and standardized agriculture, improve agricultural product quality and traceability, meet global agriculture product purchase standard. For food production, packing, transporting, and storage producers, our powerful technical team provide overall food safety, quality, and uh, sustainable development solutions, ensure companies fulfill importing exporting standards, assure customer confidence, better control the risks. For government authorities, uh, Kaixin ha has rich experience to provide professional food safety assessment and the second party audit service for many uh, China local authority departments, such as Beijing Food and Drug Administration and the Shandong Administration mm -hmm. for Market Regulation. Uh, recently, Cashin has won two contracts through local market uh, regulators' tenders to conduct uh, second-party audits to food manufacturers, restaurants, and uh, distributions in June and October. The contracts okay. are secured through a joint effort with buyer, signifying context breakthrough in pursuing agri-food integrated service strategy. And we also serve for the international key account audit service. As collaboration with Neutral, Kaixin is providing tailored second-party audits to food supplement and chemical manufacturers mm -hmm. in China. So thank all you for all, that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I think we can go um, back to that subject also in a dedicated uh, uh, session uh, because it's really interesting, and I think that uh, all our um, audiences might be interested to learn more about the topic. So um, let us now. Uh, 
we've received plenty of questions actually um, during the session. Uh, let us uh, start with two questions for you, Harry. Uh, so the first one, how does Cotecna fight food counterfeiting? Yes, indeed, counterfeiting is a, is a big topic, huh? and especially currently. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, when there is a shortage in some uh, area of food, a shortage of supply, it's, it's well known that prices are going up, and so counterfeiting begins to be very attractive for uh, um, counterfeiters. So, of course, uh, there is, and this is probably the most, uh, um, uh, one of the most uh, demanding and uh, exciting topic in food safety. Because when we are looking for food for counterfeiting, we, we don't know what we are looking for. When you are looking for <laughs> contaminants, you know what you have to target on your testings. But when you are looking for uh, some uh, counterfeiting process, you don't know what you should find in your uh, in your product. So you should detect, like in doping in sport, you should detect what is not supposed to be in your product. So there is a, a, a lot of new technology, testing technologies that now enable uh, Cotecna and other uh, partners mm -hmm. to um, uh, identify non-targeted substances. Among those uh, techniques, there is uh, the DNA technologies, so uh, leading by the new, new, new generation uh, sequencing methods that en enable to compare the DNA of a product, could be meat, could be fish, could be uh, plants, to compare with database and see, okay, this is uh, um, a product that has been counterfeit or it is, this is a product that does not contain exactly what we expect it to contain. This is one approach. There is also other approaches based on isotopes. Isotopes are, uh, I will not dig into the detail, but isotopes are the way to detect that uh, uh, um, um, an atoms is not coming from what we mm -hmm. expect it to come uh, in, in wine, for instance, if you, you are supposed to to get sugar coming from the grapes. And if there is uh, adding uh, an adding of uh, um, of uh, a beet sugar, which is a, not necessarily a load, uh, isotopes enable you to detect that the sugar is not coming from from grapes, but from from beets. So this is a, a large area mm -hmm. of testing developments that are currently existing. Yeah. And I know that uh, Neotron, especially Neotron, is developing methods in all those various uh, um, areas to uh, provide our customers some solutions against uh, counterfeiting. So, and there is also, okay. this is for testing, but there is in the other end some mm -hmm. other methods uh, based on traceability that could help also to detect uh, uh, counterfeiting too. Okay. Thank you, Harry, for the first question. The second one is, when it comes to consumers, do you think there is enough awareness about the importance of food safety? Um, I think there is quite, uh, in fact, consumers are well aware of the risk, there, um, the risk uh, due to, to, to food safety because of, you know, uh, um, I think foodborne diseases are one of the most uh, mm -hmm. uh, and first uh, um, uh, cause of, of death and infantile death for, for years and for, for centuries. So it's it's very well known by people for years and centuries. Um, mm. But the problem is that when uh, in some situation people feel that the most important is to have more food, mm -hmm. uh, to get food for, to, to feed uh, uh, your children, uh, you may possibly pay less attention to, to safety. Okay. Uh, when you are looking for for cheaper, you you maybe uh, so so people have to the consumers uh, uh, should keep should stay aware of the risk and and regulation and regulatory regulation bodies are working also to help to uh, get people aware of of the importance of a safe and healthy uh, uh, food uh, and, and better nutritional uh, intake uh, for uh, for for young people especially. Okay, thank you, Ari. So um, we still have five more minutes. So let us take three additional questions. Perhaps, Ari, we can take them and uh, and distribute to the to the speakers, yeah. please. Thanks a lot. Um, so yes, you, you... briefly. <laughs> yeah, 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 briefly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one minute, I have to uh, recover the question. I'm sorry, but. Uh... Uh, er, there are. Um, Would you like me to help you? Perhaps? Yeah, maybe. You know, uh, there is sure. there is one which is about uh, uh, food safety certification uh, for the for That's, the Africa. Okay, so are uh, we considering food safety certification for the Africa? 
I know this is wild because of the way things are done here. Yeah. So uh, can you please just like, yeah. Yeah, I, I in two words, and maybe some of my colleagues could, uh, could elaborate also a bit. Um, mm -hmm. We, we, as far as I know, we are not really uh, as such working in food certification in Africa, but I think we are more uh, involved in deploying VOC programs, including food safety checking. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the first step, and I think this is the first step for Cotecna to develop our uh, food safety activities in Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. This will lead for, for sure not just to certification. I think it will lead to for certification, and our colleague in in in, in China will help. But also, it will lead to better uh, 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 to be to be more and more part of the food safety uh, uh, program that are uh, uh, in Africa, especially by uh, possibly in 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 the in the in the year to come to get more uh, testing ca capabilities in Africa uh, to provide local and fast uh, turnaround uh, testing to uh, to the to the local customers. But VOC is uh, verification of conformity, and you know it very well, Mariam, is, is really our uh, our uh, main approach when it comes to food safety in Africa. Fantastic. Um, another question is, um, can you please share with us overall criteria to ensure the safety of the food? Uh, an overall criteria to ensure the food safety of food is a very, very large uh, uh, question. Huh? It's, it's, it's not easy to uh, to to, uh, to answer. Um, what I know is that uh, to keep your uh, any food stuff free from any chemical or pathogen contamination, uh, the best approach and the historical approach has been developed through the HACCP method, which is uh, a method coming from the NASA in uh, in the US from from the space uh, industry, which is to id identify, assess all the risks and hazards in order to uh, to anticipate it. And the point is not to to recover after a crisis, but but more to identify. And the criteria for it are very well known. Uh, mm -hmm. HACCP method are now very well. Uh, um, um, understand and, and, and put in practice in most of uh, uh, in most of uh, the the area of the food industry, uh, and this will uh, uh, this allow uh, the anticipation of, uh, of of the risks. But in addition to this, there is also uh, and that's where Cotecna also is coming is to to provide a wide area of testing, and this is a way mm -hmm. uh, this is a way to uh, identify the you know the rising. Uh, the rising hazards uh, within uh, your activities um, to identify well in advance the pathogens uh, surge, uh, if any, um, and, and, and that's the way how, how you okay. can uh, 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 okay. put in place a policy that ensure better food safety, but it's a, it's it's a it's a, you know a never ending fight. Topic, you, yeah. you must, <laughs> yes, and topic, and you must consider that it's never win for 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 once for all. Okay, so I think we'll stop now um, as the time is uh, unfortunately over. Uh, but we invite all our um, uh, audience to ask any question um, within the survey that we'll be sending after the end of this talk show. Yes. So. Yeah, if yes, I may, I, I just forget to, to mention the, the two documents I mentioned about the from the USFDA and the United Nations. Yes. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I don't think I tell the, 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 the name of it. So to help you to find it uh, on the web uh, from the USFDA, it's new area of smarter food safety, new area mm -hmm. of smarter food safety. And for the United Nations uh, Food and Agri Organization, it is thinking about the future of food safety. So these two Thank documents you. are available online huh? and I would like to, to encourage yeah. you strongly to, to download it. We can also uh, share the, the link if yeah. we have them later with the audience. So I'd like to thank you for attending our very first talk show. Um, and also, of course, I thank uh, all our fantastic speakers. So thank you, Harry. <laughs> thank you, thank Marco. You. Thank you, Thank you, Kamlesh. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, uh, Dr. Chandrajit, for um, sharing with us uh, your knowledge. Um, also, just before going, let me just uh, share with you a few information. 
please keep in touch as we'll be sending out a survey where you can let us know which topic you would like us to cover in the future, be it uh, via talk show or webinars. Uh, we'll also share the record of the talk show online and it will be accessible for everyone. And uh, thanks again for attending our very first talk show at Cotecna. And see you soon. Thank you.